Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Toro in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon Raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys probably the last automation tutorial you'll ever need for any of these DAWs. So do not get discouraged. After watching this video, I hope or will uh, give you an understanding of basically how to use automation when it comes to mutes, sends, plugins, bypasses, every which way, even creative ways that you can use automation for your mixes and masters if you're not already doing so. It's very important to use automation and it can really do a lot of heavy lifting in your mixes or masters when it comes to your songs. So let's get right to it. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm gonna play you one of my own songs. Uh, it's called You Trippin'. I'm gonna play this for you and what I want you to pay attention to is the vocal. I want you to pay attention to the vocal and the delay relationship. So the relationship between the vocal and the delay. There is automation. Listen closely. I can see you on the way. Yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah. You acting different when you in LA. Yeah. You in a mood or you feeling great. Okay, so you heard that. Basically, on the tail ends of the lead vocal, you'll notice these uh, delay throws, where basically there's this delay that is kind of filling in those pockets of missing uh, uh, vocals, in a sense. And it helps to make the song sound a lot more full and open and, and more dimensional and depth. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. Now, before we go any further, I would ask you guys to like and subscribe on this video and channel to keep this channel alive. Also visit helpmedevon.info at any time so that you can get a lot of our presets, uh, templates, vocal chains, um, and a bunch of uh, other goodies for any DW whatsoever. Now, let's get back to this. So what I want you to always understand is that do not get discouraged by this DEW. Yes, I am using Pro Tools, but when it comes to automation, it's a pretty universal language across the scale of DAWs. Now, the language that is very common in most DAWs is this. On your track, you'll notice that there is this automation drop-down window where it basically reads off, read, touch, latch, and write. If I get you to understand what these things mean, you will totally and completely understand how to use automation. Now, let's go to the very first button. The very first button I'm gonna show you in the automation modes is off. Now, when I click off, now remember, this is corresponding to this track only when I do this. So when I click off, what off is basically saying is, hey, if there is automation on this track, do not read it. Do not read it at all. Do not engage it. Do not use that automation that is written on this track. Let me show you what it sounds like now. Check this out. I can see you on the way. Yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah. You acting different when you in LA. Yeah. So the automation is gone from the big parts that are thrown. Now I know what you're saying, I did hear a delay. Well, I have a slight low delay that's underneath. Check out what I have for the automated delay that I have underneath it. So I have two delays on this vocal. One is automation where I'm doing big moments and one is that it's a constant moment, but it's very low. So check this out. Let's bring this back to read. Now listen. I can see you on the way, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah. yeah. You okay, so you hear those big moments. Basically, I have a separate delay that I'm basically throwing it just for those tail end moments to give me some space. And that happens when I throw it into read mode. Basically, when you put your fader into read mode, you're telling the DAW, read the automation that I have written to this track. Cool? Got you. Okay. Next thing we're gonna move on down to is touch. Now, touch is an automation mode where basically you're telling the fader or track or the entire track in uh, Pro Tools or any DAW, whenever I move a knob, I want you to write that information. But when I write that information, I want you to throw it back to its original state. Got me? I'll show you exactly what this means. So to make it a little bit easier for you, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete all of this automation that is on this track. So I'm gonna delete this automation that is here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this fader right here, which is the sin that is creating that automation that we had in the first place. We deleted it all now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write some automation using the touch function. Watch what it does. 
I can see you on the way, on the way. Yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great, feeling great. Yeah. You acting different when you when in you LA, in LA. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at this information, you see what I did. It did exactly what I was doing as far as moving my fader um, up and down. Now, what you notice in the tuck, touch mode was that it reverted back to its bottom level. Basically, it went all the way back down, and that is a, uh, a characteristic of touch. Touch will allow you to use the fader or whatever the knob is, but it will revert it back to its original state before you started uh, to create automation. So always keep this in mind for touch. Now, I know what some of you are saying, hey, what if I wanted to hold the actual automation that is there when I actually touch the fader? Well, guess what? That is a function called latch. So when you use the automation function latch now, what latch is gonna do is, it's gonna allow you to do the same exact thing as touch, writing the automation as you move uh, faders and things of that nature, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna hold that automation at the place where you actually left it. So instead of putting it somewhere and letting it go and it dropping, you're gonna put it there, let it go, and it's gonna stay writing automation like that. Check this out. So let's de delete this automation that we created. Let's go here and watch this. This is on latch mode now. I can see you on the way. Yeah, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah. You acting different when you in LA. Yeah. You in a mood or you feeling great. So you see, as soon as I let go of the fader, it kept it at the same place that I kept it. So wherever I decided to put the automation, it stayed there. If I released it, it stayed there. Now, at the adverse effect is if I use touch mode, if I release the automation where I had it, it would have dropped back down to its original state. So that's the big difference between touch and write. Um, excuse me, touch and latch. That's a big, big difference between those two things. So decide what you want to do. If you want to keep the automation to where it is, then fine, you use that for that. But if you want to actually bring it back down to its original state, touch. Choose it wisely. So the next automation mode that I wanna run you guys by, and this is the last automation mode, is write. Now, a lot of people actually look over write and don't use write much. The reason why write is actually pretty powerful is because what write enables you to do is, it allows you to overwrite, is really the word that I want you to think about. It allows you to overwrite any automation that is there. Whether you touch the fader or not, it will overwrite the information as far as automation that is there. I'll help you understand exactly what that means. Check this out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave this fader down at zero, at the very bottom. Let's see what it does to our automation that is already there. I can see you on the way, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. So look what it did. All that automation data that was there, it overwrote, it overrid it. Now to me, I look at it as more of a destructive uh, automation mode, where basically, say for instance, you wanna just put something to a certain level and leave it there, it will override it without you even touching the fader. So check this out to help you understand more. Let's say for instance, I want, I screwed up and I say, oh my gosh, you know what? I want the whole automation to be at tw negative 20 uh, dB as far as my sin level is concerned. Well, watch this. I can see you on the way. Yeah, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah, yeah. You acting different when you in LA. Yeah. You in a mood or you feeling gray? So look at that. Right is very destructive. Anything that is basically, uh, you don't even have to touch the fader in order for it to start writing automation, as opposed to if you use latch or touch mode, it will only write automation as you move it. Now, to help you understand this a little bit more, I'm going to take this automation, which we already have, right? This automation is set here right now, and I'm going to put it in touch mode. Watch what happens when we're in touch mode. I can see you on the way. Yeah, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. So as it's playing, touch actually isn't writing anything. Although we're in touch mode, it isn't going over the actual automation that we actually have there. Now check this out. I can see you on the way. Yeah, yeah. Taking pictures and you feeling great. Yeah. So the automation was only written when we actually touch the fader. The same thing would be for latch. But in write mode, it will destructively overwrite all of the automation no matter 
what. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the difference between off, read, touch, latch, and write. If you know these, these, these five modes, I believe it's five, right? Did I say five? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, if you know these five modes, then you have a basic understanding of uh, automation. Now, granted, for me personally, I tend to use touch a lot. That's really my main one that I pretty much always use. Sometimes latch, those are really the two that you have to really pay attention to. What I highly recommend so that you don't screw yourself over is uh, make sure that after you're done with your automation to turn it to read. Because then if you don't turn it to read, what happens is, let's say for instance, you happen to touch that fader just a little bit during uh, a playback. Now you just wrote automation, you don't even know what happened. So put it to read so that it doesn't actually write anything by accident to your actual automation. Okay, now one last bonus that I'm gonna show you guys is this. It's not just dedicated to actual faders that you can actually use automation for. It actually works for your plugins as well. And I'm talking about the actual individual buttons in your plugins, you can actually write automation to. So if you wanna take the, the, the bass out of a, a certain instrument, but gradually, that can be done with automation as well. I'm gonna show you. Now that we all experts and we know the modes, I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done. So let's say for instance we have, let's take this off first. Let's say for instance we go on over to our guitar, which is right here. So let's go to our guitar, which is right here, and let's solo, listen to this guitar. Cool, lo-fi sounding guitar. Now, let's say for some reason, we want to roll off a bunch of the low end as time progresses on this uh, guitar. Now, how would we possibly roll off the actual bottom end of this guitar, uh, guitar, make it more telephone sounding gradually as the song is playing? Well, we're gonna use automation. So check this out. Let's open up an EQ. This is an EQ right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come right on over to here. So I have to think to myself, basically how I would do it is, you would take a, 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 a high pass filter, or excuse me, you take a low cut, and you basically start to cut, right? That is basically what I'm thinking. So what I'll do is, this is the motion that I'm trying to create, is this. Basically going from the bottom, and going all the way up until I have a more telephony kind of sounding guitar. Now, the way that you do this is like this. In Pro Tools, there's a special command. It's Control, Option, Command. Press these three buttons, Control, Option, Command. Click the button that you want to create automation for within the plugin, which is this one right here for me. I click it while holding Control and Command. Now, what I would do is, this, but this comes up and what I'll do is I'll press enable automation for HPF frequency, boom. Now, automation is able to be written uh, to this actual particular parameter in the plugin. So to me, I was always taught the three finger, so the, uh, th a three finger, uh, always think about your three fingers when it comes to automation. That's the way I turn my plugin buttons into actual um, uh, automation knobs as far as being able to listen to automation. So now that I've turned that button into actual physical uh, an automation knob that it can read, what I do is I go on over to the actual fader track and I turn it to what? I turn it to touch. I turn it into a, 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 a place where now it's saying, hey, I am listening, I am awaiting your instructions to whatever button that you have ready for automation. So we got this button ready for automation and now let's create some automation. So let's move on back over to here. Let's change our view to the RTA so that we can see the actual uh, knob. And now in Pro Tools, what it does is, in a lot of DAWs is, now the view for that automation is enabled because you enabled it, okay? So remember, you have to actually enable the button for automation in order to get to this actual view. So this is my automation uh, uh, view for this particular fader now, okay? So now we're gonna write some automation. So watch this very closely, watch this. Cool, sick, we did some automation here now. So pay attention to what it did uh, as far as I'm concerned. 
when we had it in touch mode. It listened, it understood us, and we rolled it off, and it backed it off as soon as we let go. That's touch. Now, if you wanted to hold, what would you do? You would basically put it into latch mode if you wanted it to last for a longer time in the song and write it that way. So I use touch to do it this way. And this can work for any button in your plugins um, as far as creating automation, sends, and parameters for individual knobs. Think about how creative you can get. For me personally, I like to use the bypass button a lot. So basically in this bypass button, I'll press Control, Option, Command, three fingers, click, Enable Automation for Master Bypass, and now, if I come over to my view mode, bi Master Bypass is now there as well, and this is the Master Bypass. So now, let me just write some automation, and I'm gonna bypass back and forth. Okay, and we wrote the bypass automation. Now, do you see how creative you can get with this? You could do this with reverbs, you could do this with delays, you could do this with anything if you understand the modes, if you understand that you can do this basically with any of the, 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 um, the parameters in your plugins. All it will take is a simple Google search on finding out how to turn your knobs and your plugins to automation knobs, and it will, change everything you do. Just make sure that you always turn your track into the given or correct automation mode that suits your needs. So remember, after you're done creating automation, you click over here and you click read. Do not forget this. This will be the biggest mistake of your life if you forget it. So that was my tutorial on hopefully automation and hopefully being the last automation tutorial that you'll need to understand how to get a basic understanding of automation. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you like how you like the video as well as what you would like to see next. Uh, also, you can follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram and check out helpmedevon.info at any time uh, for a bunch of goodies for all DAWs basically that we have in that store. You can also join our Discord community with a bunch of audio professionals and beginners like yourself trading information and just getting better at mixing every single day with the HMD squad. I hope that was helpful and uh, until next time, you guys.